Hi, Max Kay here, deputising for Gary Mitchell, our regular host who can't be with us tonight. Thankfully, he's not in rehab. He has a legitimate excuse, excuse for not being here tonight. He couldn't be bothered. Tonight on Sweet and Sour, we have a letter from a woman who is controlled by her husband or partner who is a health freak. He is also a control freak. And what's more, he hates chocolate. The man must be mad. And then we have a young lady who has not one lover, but two. And she feels that human beings were not meant to be monogamous. Well, I'll drink to that. And then there is the poor grandmother who has a lovely granddaughter who feels she feels is out of control. She wears dirty clothes, holes in the knees, she goes to university, maybe that's the reason, who knows. And what's more, she doesn't shave under her arms. Her grandmother thinks she's one of those. Well, I don't shave under my arms. I think I might be one of those. All that and more when we meet the panel tonight on Sweet and Sour. I'll be back soon. Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby, it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. Pour some sugar on there, baby. It's time for Sweet and Sour. How's it going, sir? Hi there. I'm not Gary Mitchell. I'm Max K. just in case you hadn't noticed. Welcome to Sweet and Sour. It's lovely to have you here with us, and it's lovely for us to be with you. Well, I think it's lovely for us to be with you. I want you to meet our panel. Very interesting panel tonight. First of all, we have Stacey Snooks. Hello, Stacey Snooks. Hello, Max. How, How are, are you? you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good. I'm absolutely well. I ask the questions. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so I ask you first, how are you? I'm very well, thank good. you. Good, yeah, and I'm well. How are you, Max? I'm fine. No, you, you're doing it again. Sorry. <laughs> Stacey Snooks is a guru. That's right. Of what? Everything. Yeah, I'm like a Maharishi or something like that. Oh, just kind of a guru of everything. Everything, I see. Too okay. many things to mention in this short period of time. Well, that's lovely. But do, do you have a work? I mean, you work as a guru? Oh, well, no, not really. Do you get paid for being a guru? Not really. No? It's more a voluntary guru kind of situation. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the lovely Brigitte Doucet. Hello, Brigitte. Hello, Max. Enchanté. 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 Comment ça va? Oh, be, bene, grazie. <laughs> <laughs> Molto bene. Molto <laughs> bene. <laughs> Um, How are you? I'm well, I'm well. I it's lovely to be you're, back. You're in Sydney. I mean, you're here now, of yes. course. But you're a school teacher in Sydney. Yes, that's correct. Tell me about that. I never knew that. Well, I actually... Why wasn't I told? <laughs> I had a, a degree in the kit bag and um, oh. in teaching, and it was something that I decided I was ready to move from one industry back into something I was quite passionate about. So Absolutely. I've been doing that for the last two years. Wonderful. Yeah. Absolutely It's great. Wonderful. It's very, very fun, actually. It is. Yeah. It's fantastic to see you back again. Thank you and very much. And you'll be much. going back to Sydney just after the uh, holidays, Yes, on Thursday. Yep. Oh, lovely. We're sorry to leave. Yeah. And the lovely John Arden. You're lovely, not John Arden. <laughs> no, you're not lovely, actually. No, oh, you're well, not. thank you very much. But you're not a bad-looking guy. Oh, well, thank you. Neither are you. No, thank you very much. <laughs> For my age. Well, yeah. what can I say? 46. <laughs> wow. What? Bloody lies, eh? 46. <laughs> okay, well, there you And go. you're a mining entrepreneur. Oh, uh, entrepreneur? No, just a uh, minor worker at this stage. But, uh, yeah, I wish I was a mining entrepreneur. First time on Sweet and Sour? It is my first time on Welcome. Sweet and Sour. Thank You'll you very much. Well. There's some very interesting questions for you. Looking forward to it. And on the end, Heinz. Hello, I'm Heinz. Here, how are you? Heinz, why don't you dress up when you come on this program? Man, I've done it for 10 years. It's so actually my 10th year. You're that just I so come dull when you come on these programs. Why can't you <laughs> I know. wear light clothes? Now, you know, the people love me in my pink suit because I'm the only one who gets away with it. You are. That's it. Right. No, the cold one, the silky one, you know, and this sort of thing. Nobody questions your sexuality when you wear pink. No, no, that, no. Right, mate. No yeah, I had to watch it when I walk across King's Cross with my jacket on there. Oh, King's Cross, oh, where am I? It's Noah's Bridge. Have we got subtitles Sydney. on under this as well? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Conscience, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lovely now, to see you, Heinz. I'm, I'm glad to be back, people. I'll mm -hmm. give you my best advice as usual. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. We'll look forward to that. Yep. So we'll go right into the first question now. I'm just, excuse me putting on glasses. I don't really need them, just for seeing. Uh, <laughs> this one's... Uh, uh, hello, sweet and sour panellists. What is it with men who want to control every morsel that women eat? My man, who is a confessed health nut, asks me daily about what I have eaten. 
You see, he's into conspiracy theories about food manufacturers and always recites the same lines about them having little or no understanding of the real health considerations. I keep telling him that the government ensures that there are no toxic substances in our foodstuffs. He won't let me eat chocolate. Shame, shame. Processed meats, lollies, all my favorite twisties. I have to take fish oil, fish oil, olive oil, and linseed oil. My God, you must no, be very yeah. regular. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have too much sugar, have to eat fruits and so on. You get the idea. Uh, is, that he, is, is that he thinks that he's going to live forever. Is he insecure about his mortality? He says that we can all have an obligation to be the best humans we can be. And that for starts with our body, and that starts with our body. Really, I think everything is bad for you, but he's so good to me that I just do it, even though it drives me crazy. Is he over the top or in the right? Stacy, you will be an expert on this. Stacey. Stacey. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I'm not an expert. On well, Shelley, I'm absolutely shocked <laughs> that you have to give a rundown on your whole day's eating habits because whilst I understand people should eat in healthy fashion, it's also nice to have some of the other things that are probably not so healthy but we enjoy. So I think everything in moderation. Have some chocolate, have some twisties, and if you can't get, get them past your bo boyfriend or your man, just don't tell him you had them. But I think everything in moderation and you need to take control of what you want to eat and not be um, accountable to somebody else because it's a little bit ridiculous, in my opinion. He's a bit of a brute, isn't he? Well, I think perhaps she might need a new boyfriend, to yeah, be honest. That's right. Somebody who eats a bit. Who eats chocolate and all the bad things. Heinz, for instance. Yeah, I'm on a diet, as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> I can see. You, but I, so you've lost about three grams since I last saw Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's three and a half, actually. <laughs> that's the potato. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's my turn, is it? You finished? Have you yeah, got you said finished, everything? Thank you. Yeah, yep. she finished. Okay. Thank you, Stacey. Thank right, you. Oh, well, I, I was conspiracy theory and all that. I was thinking a bit of the cohort of Julia Gillard, you know, that uh, you sort of gave him all the healthy food and it doesn't pass wind. So, you know, that'd be good, oh, wouldn't it? Oh, yes, they, I they're see. They're all carbon tax. Carbon dioxide. Yeah, the, well, that's the, great. Emissions. If everybody eats nuts and and lives healthy it might be a good thing, eh? But the funny thing is, well, I must say this, that when you are, uh, do eat healthy, you do pass more wind. Well, it depends. Because if you, you start eating greens and cabbage and things If you carry one of like my goulashes or a, a garlic with sausage, my, that's explosion. Yeah, oh, is it? Oh, yes, thank you for, <laughs> thank you for I warning us. I don't want to get too much into detail here. Thank you for warning but, us. But <laughs> yes, yes, now you're safe. I've been eating very carefully, you know? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> But no, but Brigitte. I quite like the name Stacey. Did so, you, yeah. Stacey. <laughs> Sorry. Um, thank you, Max. I. You're a guru. This is. Oh, I'm not a guru on this by any stretch You've of the imagination. Book. I do. I brought a little book along, and um, first of all, I just want to say, most people, when they've got a strong opinion about something, it's just that they want to be heard. So he's obviously done a lot of reading. This is something that he's passionate about. He's saying that everyone has an obligation to be the best human being they can be, and that starts with your body and things like that. So he's obviously very passionate about this. If you um, can at least um, sort of show him that you understand that what he's talking about, or that you, you've considered the information, and then you say, but I think that everything in moderation is a good thing, as long as you... As long as he feels that you have understood what he's talking about, I think he'll be slightly happier and then maybe you can get that balance. But he's a bloody control freak. No, no, I'm not, I'm not saying do what he says. I'm saying appreciate what he has to say and then do what you want to do and then see how it goes. Good. So there's a book here that I brought in and it's about additive alert. Uh, it's an additive alert. So on the back of all your products, you've got all these numbers and in here it tells you exactly what those numbers are. There are some products in here or numbers in here on products that we have in Australia that have been banned in other countries. So he does have some information correct. Um, but who can live without chocolate? And who can live without twistings? Man, and the man's Every, mad. I, I agree with Stacey. Everything in moderation. And just, you know, learn, learn about the information that's out there. But do what you want to do. Because if you're unhappy, oh my goodness, that's a terrible way to live. Absolutely. Yeah. John, this is your first answer of a question. It is my first answer of the question. My first, this is going to go probably against everything that you guys have said, but in all honesty, how overweight do you have to be for somebody to actually take charge of, you know, what you're eating and what you're actually putting into your body? A, yeah. And I mean, just going, just going over through the, through the things that she's mentioned in the list here, like olive oil, that's, that's not really supposed to be good a part of any healthy diet. I mean, oil, it, good. it's good in moderation, well, like others had it. said. However, it is mainly fat. And, and linseed oil, 
I don't know. I'm not even sure that's edible. No, I, think I think that's, that's actually that's toxic. That's for oiling your bicycle chain with. I think. Well, I've actually I've actually oiled up a lot of my work Clean boots with linseed yeah, oil. Clean your bowels. Clean <laughs> your bowels. <laughs> well, well, I just I, again, I, 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 in all well, honesty, linseed oil. What do you want? Well, linseed oil. It, you know, with leather. If you rub linseed oil on leather, it softens leather. So, in all honesty, yeah. I think, so and I don't even know if it's actually edible, I don't know. But I just think that she probably really needs to get over it, I'm sorry. <laughs> Me, I'm really sorry. I, but that, I think, I think she... the thing is, the, what you must do is take a little of what he says on board and the rest of it, just make up your own mind. <laughs> we'll be back shortly. <laughs> On the couch, cause baby, it's time for sweet and sour. Ah, croonin' is pullin' me away as I take away my clock to the road. Ah, croonin' Wow. Did you hear that Scotsman sing there? <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> There's the far coolings. Welcome back to Sweet and Sour. Now, if you want to send us a letter, and I hope you will, Please send your letters to letters at sweetandsour.net.au. I'll do it again. Letters at sweetandsour.net.au. Now, if we read out one of your letters, not necessarily we, but the other panel reads out any one of your letters, you will receive a movie pass from Natalie Cameron at NRC. A movie pass. And this movie is, in fact, Tree of Life. Fantastic. Everybody know of the Tree of Life? No, it's know. got, uh, in it is uh, Brad Pitt and uh, Sean Penn. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. So Any there you birds? are. Any birds? Yeah, pardon? Any birds? Oh, there'll be a couple of birds in the tree oh. of life. I yeah. don't like watching got that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Eyes down, look in. Next letter. Dear Mitch, Mitch is not here. He's in rehab. No, he's not. I told a lie. I'm 21 and I'm in love with two men. You greedy woman. Neither one of them knows of each other's existence. One is my long-term boyfriend and the other is a guy that I've been dating for the last three months. Two-timer. My boyfriend, boyfriend, who is my childhood sweetheart, has been working in London for the past two years. He calls me every weekend and we have a long, lovely conversation over the phone. The other guy I met by chance at a party. We started going out as friends, but lately things have become more serious between us. To further complicate the matters, my boyfriend told me that in October he is returning to Melbourne for good. I'm so torn between the two and I can't bear to lose either of them. What am I to do? Because I think, I'm thinking humans were not meant to be monogamous. That was Kim from Preston, Victoria. Wow. Well, Brigitte, with you as an experienced Mama teacher, you would know this. What do you think? Do you think humans were meant to be monogamous? I think that anthropologically speaking, uh, oh. men yeah. are all about getting their genetics into the next generation and women are about protecting and nurturing their offspring. Oh, beautiful. So, you mean they want to get it away? They want to get their end away with anybody? <laughs> Well, yeah, because it's about procreation. It's about that's that's how we're built anthropologically. However, we live in a, we live in a society where monogamy is the standard practice, and that's yeah. how we build our lifestyles oh. and all of those standard things. Standard practice. Well, Who it should that? be, I believe, in my opinion. They're all all over the place. Yeah, I know, but not, about. Uh, not but everybody. But it's, does. it's 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 I suppose a societal norm, and if you're breaking from that, it's acceptable so, for some people. That's acceptable, monogamy, but society is. Food. So yeah. what should you so do? So that's my what opinion. I think she, she's been with this guy for a very long time since she was little, childhood sweetheart. Um, she's obviously looking sideways now and, and starting to develop a relationship with this other man. So I think she probably needs to be honest with the first guy if, if she's... Because she can't cut off the second one now and go back to the first because she's always going to be thinking about the second. And her whole life she's going to be what if, what if, what if with the other guy. So it's sort of, it's sort of a, a gate closed on the other one, sadly, and she's kind of got to step up and take responsibility and choose between the two. And I think probably she's got to go in the avenue of the second guy. That's my opinion. So she can then Frankly, experience that and move on. Frankly, I think she's a little on. bastard, I'll tell you the truth. Yeah. Right. Uh, who's next? <laughs> Who have we got next? Uh, John. Well. Now you know this. You're, you're of that age, John. I'm 25. Oh. Yeah. Well, so I can, I, can, I can say that she's still quite young. But I think she's a... Floozy. I really do. Yeah, well, I really yeah. do. She's a I think slut. That she is, yeah, she is a slut. I mean, no offence, but she is. Like, she's obviously been with this guy for two years. She's been with this guy for two years, and now all of a sudden, oh, she met a guy at a party by chance. It just sounds like she's really trying to make it sound really pretty about what really goes on. I mean, a lot of 21-year-olds, like, she, it sounds like she's in a really committed relationship, and then... You know, she just met somebody. So, like Bridget says, 
You know, she is looking for uh, sideways, but I honestly think she needs to make a choice. She's going to hurt somebody whether she wants to or not, right. and she's going to have to make a choice and she's going to have to live with it. You're right, John. Good words. Good words. Uh, Stacey. Well, I think if she's suddenly saying that she doesn't believe in monogamy, must mean she's not happy. Because if she was happy, she would have yeah, no too. doubt about being monogamous. Mm -hmm. Also, I think she's a bit nasty to be stringing her boyfriend along, who's kept it by her, or stood by her for two years. Give it a and then she's uh, off with this other guy on the side and she seems annoyed that the boyfriend's coming back because she might have to make a choice. So she might end up with no boyfriends because if each finds out about the other, she might be all by herself. Well done, Stacey. Mm. Well, sounds like she well, wants to have a cake and eat it too. Well done. Exactly. Absolutely. Well done. Yeah. Heinz. Well, I agree mostly with the panel here, but she's, she's really some sort of, you know, I mean, in that age, 21, 22 people supposed to form their lives, you see and have a real relationship, the dream and the first love and all that. Like, you know, like I mean, if you take me for instance, I'm in the next age group and I have a girlfriend north of the river, one south, depending where I am. Do you? But yeah, but I tell them both about my existence, you know, and they say, oh yeah, it must be right. the pink, It must be the pink jacket that does it. No, I wear nothing when I meet them. That's Did much. You, you, it's actually <laughs> nothing. I you think, would like to know, wouldn't you? Do, do, I can't tell you all my secrets. Heinz, right? I think they think you're gay. You wear the pink jacket and they yeah. think you're gay. Well, so they you're, bloody you're, you're, safe. <laughs> <laughs> you're safe. No way, <laughs> man. No, no, no. She's, she's a slut, like you said. No, no way. <laughs> she's got to be honest, honest, very honest. Yeah with one of them uh, and forget the other one and she tells them both that's right. and goes to the sex and she'll club. finish up on that. That's it. There you are. Uh, there you are. You, you've got good advice from the, the, from the panel. That's uh, it. I believe that uh, you can't play two ends. You can't two time. You've got to be decent. You've got to be decent. We'll be back with you shortly. The thing I want to know, Gary, I have one question, is when are we going on tour like Oprah? You have the fans, don't you? Here we are. Thank you for staying with us here on Sweet and Sour. We're coming up for our last letter. So very shortly we'll be gone. So watch carefully what happens. I'm going to read the third letter. My granddaughter is nearly 23 and she is old enough to look after herself. But I worry for her because she never dresses properly. Her clothes are sometimes dirty and she has holes in her trousers. Oh, tut, tut, tut. I love my granddaughter and she is very pretty. If she keeps going like this, I worry she will never find a good job or a good husband. She is a student at the university. That causes it all. And always talks about women's liberation. Now I think she doesn't even shave under her arms. Oh, <laughs> she won't listen to me much and is turning into one of those not, for, those not having respect for elders. I'm worried that she could be one of those. Pina from Tananda in South Australia. Well now. Heinz, you can kick this one off. Maxi, you're giving me the first go yeah. on this one. Yeah. Crikey, Moses. Yeah. yeah, those under the arm business, you know, if they don't shave there, man, it's like going through the bush without the tomahawk. Where, you, where, where, <laughs> where, <laughs> where are you from, Heinz? Where are you well, from? Well, I'm from Austria. There's, there's no, no bushes. But, did it, but women don't shave under their arms there. And they don't. Oh, they in, do in, now. In, yeah, they do. Yeah, they <laughs> and Italy. Modern do, times. Do they shave under their arms in Italy, for instance? Well, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Maybe the mafia doesn't have to. They chop their heads off. Didn't, they have, didn't Air Alitalia, the Italian airline, have hair under its wings? <laughs> no, but anyway, don't distract me. No, Max, I'm not distracting. It's a very important letter, yeah, right? On. Because I'll tell you, she'll grow out of it. Because, you know, young people in their teens and twenties, you know, they go with their peers, you know, they like to have this casual dress and if they slip in sometimes. They're, they're not washing, I think it's a fib. Because most young people wash. I can see messy rooms and all that, but I know from experience most people shower, you know? And they're all, always nice and clean. I mean, if you get a feminist there who is uh, really on the move, you know, and wants to prove something, and goes, oh, oh, let's follow me, you know? <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> well done. I know okay. you always get words of wisdom from you, Heinz. Yeah, well, they're good ones. He you knows. Go. <laughs> if you live long enough, you know everything. <laughs> Stacy. Well, I think, Pina, that your granddaughter may be taking things a little bit far with women's liberation. And personally, I don't think there's any excuse for someone being 
dirty and smelly and foul. And if she doesn't want to shave under her underarms, perhaps she should wear long sleeve tops so the rest of us don't have to endure that view. But she'll stink. Well, I, she should wash. I said there's no no. Well, very rarely do men her, shave uh, under their arms, do they? Well, they don't have to. Well, so it's masculine not to. Oh, yeah, it is. That's, I mean, you do a bit of deal. Yeah, but we got really. finer hair too, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm not sure. It's on the breathing, Max, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Aryans. Breathing, Bridget. you know? Um, well, I know it, it, no, I know it does say there that she doesn't shave under her arms, but I don't, and that her clothes are sometimes dirty. But again, it doesn't really say that she necessarily um, is not washing. Uh, you know yeah. what this made me think of? It made me think of when I was at university, and all I wanted was a pair of red Doc Martens, cherry red Doc Martens, and, and you I didn't was on and on and on. Arms <laughs> no, well, actually, I, no, I did, but I did. I know that there are, I mean, look at back in the days of Jermaine Greer and the burning of the bra and all that kind of thing. People do things when they're in their 20s, you I'm know, to make statements. The burning of the bras, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they make statements and you're right, Heinz, they go with their peers and things like that. And I think maybe have a, I know it's hard and you're worrying about her, but if you think back to when she was a little girl before she went through her teens, she'll probably, she's still got that little girl inside her and she'll come out the other end with all the statements made and probably turn out just fine. So... There you are. Yeah. yeah. That's oh, what Brigitte, I think. The question is, is she one of those? Brigitte. That's the thing. She seems to think she's going to be one of those, whatever one of those is. Not that there's anything wrong with that. John. <laughs> well, that's going to be my question. What is she referring to when she's asking one of those? Like, she thinks one she's of those. She might be. What? Gay. The, uh, homosexual. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, it's her decision. And if the grandmother loves her as much as she says she does, yes, it's hard to see your granddaughter wearing smelly clothes and stuff. But she is 20, well, she's nearly 23. So I think that she's old enough to make her own choices in life. And I think maybe she just needs to support her, regardless of the decisions she makes. However, That's I right. do think, I do think that she will be old enough to kind of snap out of it because she is still early 20s. And a lot of people go through phases like that. So I think she just needs to support her in whatever decision that she makes and then she will snap out of it eventually, I think. You're a very wise young man, John. A lot of life experiences. A lot of life experiences. <laughs> well, really. I don't shave under my arms either, so I know what she she's doing. There you are. <laughs> we don't know if you're one of those. <laughs> if, you, if you don't support them, you lose them. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep. Right, all we have to do is decide which is the best letter tonight. And may I tell you, the best letter tonight will receive a pair of sunglasses from Aussie Optical. The best letter that we have really? tonight. Really? Yes, mm. right. I need one. Do okay, let's, let's think it. Is it one, did we say? Yes. Letter one? Yes, I like the letter one. I think it's yes. made some yes. pleasures. Yeah, to you, the French lady over there. To you, it's Shelley of uh, Cronulla in New South Wales. You've won a pair of sunglasses. So you'll be able to see your, uh, your control you freak uh, <laughs> no. a little better. Or a little less, even. At least you can't eat them. <laughs> so there you are. It's lovely. Well, guys, thank you so much for being here tonight. Heinz, been You're lovely to have you here. Maxie. Thank you. You're fantastic as well. And thank I love you. the jacket and I love the bow ties. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And Stacey, how nice to have you here. And Guru. Great to be here. A person who knows everything. And That's I thought right. it was me. It's no, lovely. I probably know a little bit more. Maybe. Uh, Brigitte, <laughs> nice to have you back again. It was lovely to be back. Thank Don't you for inviting me to be on the panel. I won't. No, I'll be back. Maybe I'll just come and see you when I get to sit there. Maybe. You yeah. should. Give us a call. I'd love to do that. And John, first time. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. I'm sure you'll be here more. I would really like well that. Well done. It's Thank lovely. you very much. No, it was good. It was very fun. It was awesome. Is it good? It's good. Wonderful. Nice seeing you all. Thank you all for watching. It's been a pleasure being here, hasn't it? On yes. behalf of us all. Oh, we've been a great time yeah. and hope you had a great time too. So from all of us here on the panel, good night to you all. Thank, Thank you so much.